I beg to move that this House do now adjourn. Question is that this House do now adjourn. Just before I call Mr Perkins, could I inform the House that the permission has been given to the House photographer to move around parts of the chamber and take photographs in the course of this debate? That has consent. Toby Perkins. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. Let's hope he gets my best side. Um, I'm very pleased to have uh, secured this adjournment debate on the vitally important issue of Derbyshire County Council funding and governance. The services that people in our county receive have diminished so much, and whilst the Minister and his department must take their share of the blame, it's also important to have an opportunity to detail the ways that the County Council's leadership has also added to their problems. Now, since the uh, Government came to power here in Westminster, Derbyshire County Council's budget has been slashed by £780 million in real terms. In 2010, that budget was around a billion, £1.48 billion in today's money. Derbyshire County Council's current budget is £700 million, and therefore is less than half of what it was 14 years ago in real terms. At a time of great financial hardship, not least owing to the runaway inflation unleashed by the party opposite, it is a disgraceful and heartbreaking situation. And these cuts have a material effect on the provision of services and on people's lives. Next week, the Council will decide whether to go ahead with its proposal to close 10 children's centres across the region, not only denying essential services to the children and families of Derbyshire, but also potentially costing 118 people their livelihoods. Centres at risk of closure include Home Hall and Old Whittington in my constituency and those in Alfreton, Ironville, Langley Mill, Bolsover, Hadfield, Gamesley, Matlock and Charnos in Ilkeston. Uh, I will do. Can I commend them for bringing this forward? And, and, and trying to understand in my mind if, if Derbyshire Council has had their monies reduced at the same time their population has grown, therefore their demands for the monies that they have has grown, is there not something illogical and unfair and immoral with, with that happening, in this case, to Derbyshire Council? Well, I mean, he, it wouldn't be an adjournment debate without the honourable gentleman's contribution. I'm grateful to him for it, because uh, the point he makes is a, is a very well-made one. Uh, the... Uh, Budget cuts that we've seen in Derbyshire have come alongside uh, an increase in, in the population. Um, and uh, there is, a, I think, a, an argument that many of us in Derbyshire would make that, that the authority has been particularly uh, badly treated when it comes to finances. So, so the point he makes uh, is a very valid one. Now, when the United Kingdom and Derbyshire were both run by Labour administrations, there were 56 of these children's centres. After 14 years, uh, if these plans are approved, there will be just 12. These centres provide absolutely essential services like health visits, speech and language development, healthy eating, parenting, school readiness, family support, parenting groups uh, and help to improve family relationships. And we know that the work done by the staff in these centres has a massive benefit to the children and families uh, that they help. Uh, I was first elected to this place in 2010 and I remembered that during that uh, election campaign. The issue of whether Shaw Start was safe uh, if the Conservatives were elected was a key plank of the Labour Party campaign. The Conservatives furiously denied Gordon Brown's claims that one in five Shaw Start centres would be endangered uh, if the Conservatives were elected. Well, Mr Speaker, in Derbyshire, we can see that Gordon Brown was indeed wrong. We haven't seen one in five of these children's centres close. We've seen four in five. And now the government wonder why they're spending more than ever uh, on the costs of failure because they've been failed to invest uh, in the early years. So when the minister responds, can he tell us whether he believes the loss of 44 of Derbyshire's 56 children's centres during the last 14 years of a Conservative government is primarily down to electing a Conservative government uh, or down to electing uh, a Conservative council? Now, we will come in due course to the authorities' failings on special needs education, but at every school I visit, experienced head teachers say to me they have never seen so many children with serious special needs. Has anyone in government considered whether the stripping away of these early years services may be contributing to the huge increase in the number of children presenting on their first day at school without being school ready and often in need of support with speech and language dressing 
and toileting. The authority got in touch with me and with other Derbyshire MPs to ask us to lobby ministers for more money as they were being charged excessive amounts by private providers uh, of children's services, which I did and I know many other MPs did. But of course Derbyshire have been on a savage programme of privatisation of services under this administration would be vulnerable to private sector overcharging because they've crippled the, strongly publicly, the strong publicly provided services that they inherited. And one feature of this administration's approach has been the unfortunate habit of marrying this serial incompetence with careless arrogance and indifference to public opinion. And the closure of these buildings is a case in point. John Pearce, Labour's parliamentary candidate in High Peak, has teamed up with local Labour councillors to support the community's plan to create a community hub and preserve the centre at Gamesley which houses a youth club and boxing club in one of Derbyshire's most deprived communities. But those clubs were shocked to simply receive a call out of the blue from DCC to say they'd got a matter of weeks to find another venue because the decision had already been made to close the building. Now, the community are attempting to form a constituted community organisation and they have secured a three-month extension, but they are engaged in a race against time. We've also recently heard that Derbyshire County Council is looking to close two-thirds of the care homes that it manage, manages, as well as eight older people's day centres. The right to dignity in old age is a sacred covenant that we have in this country. Old people should know that when they work hard for their entire life, make a contribution to society, that they should be able to retire with a degree of comfort and security. And I feel that that covenant is disintegrating before our eyes. The uh, the governor from the school, from Brampton School, was in such despair uh, at the recent experiences that they've had at Brampton uh, that she attended the most recent full meeting of Derbyshire County Council to set out that to meet budgetary constraints whilst continuing to deliver that level of care, the school is being forced to cut 160 teaching hours a week. The cost of living crisis, spiralling rents and ever-increasing mortgage rates uh, are destroying this social contract in real time. And the inability of a council, however, to provide services that facilitate this for the most in need is a damning indictment uh, of 14 years of Tory rule and local mismanagement. This move would mean the council turfed 162 vulnerable residents onto the street and the council is closing its own centres and using the private sector more. It is spending more and getting less. Its spending on private care homes has increased by 61% since 2018-19, during the period where the authority closed seven of their own care homes, losing 156 beds. They've also closed 140 beds in the remaining 16 care homes they have and have around 30 vacancies. So where is the county's duty of care to those living in its care homes? It's not as if the council are efficient. Whilst Labour-run Chesterfield continues to enjoy the lowest council tax in the county, the Tory administration on the council has raised council tax by almost 5%. And the need for social care for adults is only going to grow and grow as people live longer lives. I can sure we, I'm sure we can all agree, Mr Deputy Speaker, this is a good problem to have, but more funding is needed from government if councils are to be able to provide essential services such as this. So can the Minister set out the guidance he has provided to county councils and authorities to plan for the delivery of services in the context of demographic change and real terms cuts to budgets? The children of Derbyshire are suffering massively under the current council leadership too. Spending on private schools for children with special needs has increased from 5.7 million in 2018-19 to 24 million in 23-24, according to the school's forum report, whilst investment in council provision falters. At almost every single one of my weekly surgeries, I have parents in attendance who have children with special needs who are unable to get into a dedicated special needs establishment. Often these children are excluded from their mainstream school and these children are missing months or in some cases years of their schooling, unable to make a mainstream placement work but unable to access specialist provision. Yet it can now be revealed that throughout this period of hardship, 
Derbyshire County Council has received around £17.5 million of capital funding from the Department for Education since 2019 for additional special school places, but has spent just a paltry £1.5 million. That's £16 million. 91% of the budget they have received sat in Derbyshire County Council's coffers while parents with special needs children lose sleep every night at the lack of provision in our county. It is nothing short of a betrayal of those parents and their children. So what can the Minister do to work with colleagues in the Department for Education to get this dysfunctional authority delivering on special needs placements for Derbyshire children? And the case of Brampton Primary School I referred to earlier encapsulates all that's wrong with Derbyshire County Council's budget allocation and service delivery. The school has an excellent special needs unit, but also has a tremendous reputation for how it supported special needs children within its mainstream provision. As a result of this reputation, many parents from well outside the Brampton catchment area with special needs children will choose it for their children. However, this reputation for inclusivity comes at a tremendous cost to Brampton. Brampton Primary has 317 children on its roll, with 31% of these children having SEN needs. The school is proud of its reputation for creating a supportive environment for children who have additional needs. But each child who has an EHC plan has the first £6,000 of their extra costs covered by the school before any central funding comes in. On top of that, there are literally dozens of children who are waiting for special needs assessments from the overwhelmed County Council Education Service. And while the children and their families wait for their assessment to be heard, the school receives no additional funding for these pupils at all. A school which has gone out of its way to support those who have the greatest needs are crashing into the rocks of an inadequate funding mechanism and a county education service that is failing to support those children. So can the Minister explain how he can ensure that schools like Brampton aren't penalised for their own success in supporting special needs children? Whilst the... Uh, I happily will. I'm grateful to him and congratulations on, on, on securing this important debate. And I, I agree with the points he's making about the need for Derbyshire County Council to get EHC peer assessments done much more quickly and much more accurately in the currently are. But I, I would like just to pay tribute to the three special schools in my constituency, especially Alfreton Park, a brand new school rebuilt actually open last year. So I know there actually has been some investment. But would he agree with me of the importance of keeping respite care centres open, not least to provide parents with a bit of a break, but also if those close, there's a real risk that if some parents they won't, they won't be able to cope and end up actually with the cost of having to have those kids in full-time residential care, actually costing the county council more and being the last thing the parents want to happen. I mean, absolutely. I, I join him in, uh, in paying tribute to those uh, special educational needs uh, placements that he's on about. The work of those uh, is absolutely outstanding. I was intending to be at Ashgate Croft School on Monday myself, but unfortunately was, was unable to make it. I'll be returning there uh, soon. And he's absolutely right about the importance of, of respite care as well uh, and the um, sort of perverse impact that cutting those services uh, ends up having on the amount of money the authority spends. So, so I agree with him uh, on both those points. Now, while the Council's budget has been dramatically reduced by the Government since 2010, its use of the precious available funds uh, has been nothing short uh, of appalling. I know that budgetary constraints have produced an atmosphere of pressure within public sector delivery bodies, and I have a profound respect and pride uh, for the workers doing their utmost in trying circumstances, but the leadership of the Council can and must do better. Derbyshire enjoys the dubious honour of being the pothole capital of the UK. The Beatles may have sung about the 10,000 holes in Blackburn, Lancashire, but research by Max Truck Rentals found the, council was, the county was home to over 90,000 potholes, and I'm pretty sure I've been over them all. Potholes are a serious problem with profound consequences for road users and for public safety. At the behest of a constituent, I recently drove from Ashgate Avenue along Old Road towards Old Brampton uh, and then to Lounsey Green, and the number of potholes I saw on this stretch alone uh, was staggering. Uh, I myself have had to replace two tyres in the springs this, with, this winter, and the state of our roads is the number one local issue raised by my constituents when we are out speaking to them uh, on the doorstep. 
Uh, and whilst the potholes are a danger for drivers, they are absolutely lethal for cyclists. Uh, I haven't yet had found the courage to tell the enraged motorists of Chesterfield that the Conservative leader of Derbyshire County Council claims that the council is one of the best in the country at pothole repairs. Uh, but I've seen for myself uh, how a penny-pinching approach creates even more work for the council, often returning to the same holes over and over uh, again. 24% of Derbyshire's principal roads need repair, compared to the second-worst county councils, Kent and Sussex, at 6%. Uh, which is uh, obviously way below. Now, Mr Lewis, the leader of County Council, was closer to the mark when he admitted that his authority adopted a patch-up and sticking plaster approach to improving our roads. Uh, when the figures are investigated, it all becomes clear. Derbyshire spends just £54.81 pence per head on road repairs, the lowest in the country, with an average spend uh, across councils of £86. So Derbyshire is allocating 36% less than the average council uh, per head uh, on road repairs. So it, it's no wonder uh, that potholes are so omnipresent across our county. The council has no plan for coordinating disruption to road services from different organisations. Uh, so why don't the government adopt Labour's plan to have oversight of these contractors so that motorists don't go through the inconvenience of a road being dug up and patched up by one contractor only for someone else to dig it up again the very next week? Uh, this is a council that, having benefited from support throughout COVID, instead of investing extra money in its services, chose to reward um, Tory councils by creating additional cabinet posts lifting its spend uh, whilst cutting back on services and also scrapped the chief executive role only to create a managing director post who at a princely 176,000 is paid more than the prime minister a 38,000 uh, pounds increase on the previous incumbent uh, so i'm afraid uh, the answers uh, for derbyshire uh, very much lie uh, at its own door uh, now the services provided by Derbyshire bear no relationship to those that existed in 2009 when both Derbyshire and Britain was run by Labour administrations, and we can't go on like this. On May the 2nd, the voters of Derbyshire have an opportunity to send a message to those who have let our county down so badly and vote for a Labour mayor and police commissioner and start the process of rebuilding our shattered public services in our beautiful county. Minister. Well, thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, and can I first of all thank the Honourable Gentleman the Member for Chesterfield, Chesterfield for initiating this debate. I have to say, Mr Deputy Speaker, in the competition of trying to uh, judge the difference between the Honourable Gentleman the Member for Chesterfield and a ray of sunshine, the, uh, it, it's not a very difficult competition to uh, engage upon, because if you listened to the uh, our honourable gentleman, all was doom and gloom and bleakness uh, in uh, Derbyshire. Let me just assure the uh, honourable gentleman, my honourable friend, the member for uh, the Amber Valley, the, my honourable friend, the member for uh, Derbyshire Dales, who's uh, in the chamber this evening as well, that in no way, shape, or form uh, is Derbyshire County Council on any red list or radar flashing screen in my department. That is good news for the residents and service users of Derbyshire. And let me also at this juncture, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, put on record uh, my thanks, as we all should do, to all of those officers and councillors, irrespective of party, who day in and day out um, turn up to serve their communities to try to make things uh, a little better for people in Derbyshire. They deserve our thanks. The Honourable Gentleman referenced in, in some uh, uh, detail, understandably so, I, I, I'm not seeking to uh, um, dismiss in any way his concerns with regards to children's centres and other uh, services provided to uh, young people. Now those, as he will know, are quite properly the, um, in, in the domain of the Department for education in very great respect. Uh, I'm not going to intrude upon uh, other ministers' uh, uh, portfolios, but what I will undertake to the Honourable Gentleman, I hope that this will serve as a sort of holding uh, reply, uh, if you will, is that I will make sure that my colleagues in DfE are aware of his 
uh, remarks and concerns, and I will ensure uh, that his remarks are responded to uh, accordingly and in an appropriate uh, way. Now, there is little or no doubt, uh, and it would be foolish of any local go government minister to stand at the dispatch box of the House of Commons and say that the uh, funding scenario for local government in England hasn't been challenging. It, it clearly has been, and I think that that was recognised, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, in the additional uh, £600 million which we provided to the local government funding settlement uh, this year. The funding formula itself has creaked and groaned and under, under stresses and strains over uh, many years. And the Honourable Gentleman is right to point out, he's not unique in, in, in doing so. Virtually every conversation I have with anybody with an interest in or representing the concerns of local government draw attention to the two um, almost unstoppable uh, trajectories of growth demand in terms of um, special educational uh, needs and the support services which wrap around that area of local government service, and of course at the other end of the age spectrum, uh, adult social care uh, too. Now those, Mr Deputy Speaker, are good news stories of themselves because they are testimony to the success of the National Health Service in supporting people in their lives and, and, and ensuring that they are uh, fit and healthy. Of course it has um, additional and growing demands on the services of local um, government. They are rising, uh, uh, rising to that challenge uh, across the piece magnificently, but of course there is always work uh, to do. And I think it is recognised across the two front benches in this uh, arena that the funding formula doesn't need sort of tinkering with, as it were, or sort of a, a, a little tweak here and there. It effectively needs dismantling and starting from scratch. Um, the, uh, the, the use of data to inform, um, the ability to define need, um, the ability to uh, respect and reflect upon uh, the differentials in need demand in rural versus uh, urban uh, and in coastal as well, as was uh, dealt with yesterday uh, during oral, oral questions, should all play into that. And that is why I'm talking to council leaderships across the country and to the wider sector about where we think that this should land in the next uh, parliament. It is not something that can be ignored because what we all want to do, particularly I think uh, reflecting in this 50th uh, year since the uh, local government reforms of 1974, we need to find a robust and sustainable way uh, so that the future of English local government can continue for the next 25 to 50 years. And post-Covid, the sector did ask government for um, uh, stability and certainty. We have delivered that by not instigating a major review of the formula, uh, but as I say, that is a job for the next Parliament. It is worthwhile, Mr Deputy Speaker, just to look at the figures for Derbyshire uh, Council. Now, the uh, Managing D D Director of the uh, Council has, by her uh, own admission, this is Emma uh, Alexander, has described the Council, and I agree with her assessment on this point, as being sound and stable financially. Now that is good news for council taxpayers and service users of Derbyshire because it means that against that backdrop of sound and stable finances, informed and proper decisions and changes can be taken rather than knee-jerk reactions in response to pressures out with their control. But uh, the Council and, and Ms Alexander are realistic enough to highlight that the Council's next focus, its immediate focus, has to be on modernisation, uh, implementing what they describe as one Council working, and new, transfer, new transformational strategic plans for the whole of Derbyshire. Now, I think that that will drive efficiency, and one can only hope that in that drive of improved efficiency, uh, then services will improve still further for the residents of Derbyshire. The settlement uh, this year for the uh, County uh, Council was a significant increase in core spending power, £8.3 
per cent from the previous year, up £54.88 million, making available a total of £715.3 million for 24-25. The social care grant, really important topics, and the Honourable Gentleman uh, referenced uh, some of the work which is done in this area, now means that for 24-25, Derbyshire is receiving £140.2 million through the social a care grant. Last year, the Government, of course, awarded £70 million of levelling up capital funding to the Derbyshire region, including £50 million for the South Derby Growth Zone and £20 million for Chesterfield Town Centre. So it is important, I would suggest to the Honourable Gentleman, and I think in his heart of hearts he, he knows this, that one, can't just, one shouldn't just look at the cold figure of the money which is produced, as important as it is in the local government finance settlement, but also in the broader ranges of support and intervention which government is providing across the county of Derbyshire. Uh, the town deal, the accelerated town fund, the levelling up fund, the community ownership fund, the future high street fund, the long term plan for towns, levelling up culture, capital regeneration, the UK shared prosperity fund, the UK Shared Prosperity Fund Multiply, the CRF, the Leveling Up Partnership, and Leveling Up Parks, all of which have generated significant sums of money, significant sums of money, to Derbyshire, which sits alongside uh, the grant and the council tax raising ability of the county council uh, to deliver service for local uh, people. Will the minister give away on that? Uh, point? I, I will, of course. If I may say on behalf of the people of Derbyshire Dales that we have been immensely grateful for the levelling up funds, £13.5 million, without which the town of Ashbourne would be going back in time instead of looking to the future in levelling up. There's also shared prosperity funds. One of my towns, Matlock, is going to be receiving a lot of money and they're going to be doing a lot of good work. So my experience of how the government and how the county council have reacted and have responded to the needs of my constituents is very different from the Honourable Gentleman for Chesterfield's views. If I can just say that in relation to the inbox, I've had over 30,000 emails since my election, and a great number of those have been issues to do with local council, with SEND provision, and with a great deal of other provisions, potholes. If I can say that the management of the county council and the Conservatives, I found, has been very good. There is always more work to do. Who couldn't spend more money on SEND? These issues are precious to us, but with the money that is available, my experience is very different from the Honourable Member uh, on the opposite side, and I am worried that this has been brought up at this stage, mid an election, when really we need to look at the facts. And Derbyshire County Council could always do with more money, but the money they have, they manage really well. The leader is particularly good, Barry Lewis. He's a credit well to all of us. Well said. Well, I'm grateful to my um, honourable friend for the um, upbeat Philip, uh, which I think um, the, we, we needed to hear from uh, a representative of Derbyshire. I'm delighted to hear that uh, her constituents, and I would suggest that probably the uh, constituents of uh, uh, Chesterfield, of Erewash, of uh, Bolsover, uh, across the uh, Amber Valley, in uh, South Derbyshire, in Clay Cross, in Staveley, in Long Eaton, all of those towns, all of those communities are really pleased to see the attention which is being spent uh, on them to deliver levelling up, to make sure that those engines of growth, those engines of livelihood and success can be sustained. And I'm absolutely convinced that the work that my honourable friend, the member for Redcar, has been doing in order to deliver the East Midlands Combined County Authority. £1.14 billion in a devolution deal for the wider West Midlands to drive growth and boost opportunity, demonstrating yet again, if demonstration were still needed, our commitment to devolving more money and power to local leaders. The establishment of the East Midlands CCA will open the way to providing considerable funding for the area. The Combined County Authority will have control of £38 million per year. Now, that can be well spent and maximised, of course, with the election of my honourable friend, the member for Mansfield, who I think has standing head of shoulders above the candidates for that post. I wish him well. 
I wish the people of Derbyshire well. This government stands behind them, ready to serve them, to meet their needs in both terms of local and central government. Mr Deputy Speaker. The question is that this House to stand adjourned. As many of that opinion say aye. Contrary, no. Eyes have it. Order, order.